Tony, I wanted to just uh, clearly say my protocol for better memory. I'm 40 years old now and my memory is suffering and it's probably because of all of the stress I've dealt with and all the brain cells I've damaged living my crazy lifestyle. I'm sure there's some things that could improve my memory both in the short term and in the long term to really build my brain. There's lots of different ways to use nootropics to improve every facet of the, the brain's abilities, but specifically for improving memory, what are some things I could start implementing now? You know, Tony, I wanted to just uh, clearly say my protocol for better memory. So first of all, memory is mostly affected by a, a neurotransmitter in the brain called acetylcholine, which is made out of an acetyl group and choline, choline from the diet. Choline, many people don't know, is an actual vitamin. Without choline, you do develop a disease. That's the definition of a vitamin. Of, of a vitamin. And the disease is fatty liver disease, which will progress into non-alcoholic steatohepatitis and is immediately reversed upon the use of choline. And I have an article series on my website that I used to have, and I also have a series on my channel about choline. But I want to summarize to you guys how I do it myself. So first of all, in my diet, I take about a gram of choline a day. How do I get that? From phosphatidylcholine, which is a lipophilic choline, and from uh, from a CDP choline or city choline, which is a hydrophilic choline. Is this something you take in the morning and it lasts all day, or do you have to multiple doses? No. What I do is I take it with food later in the day. It's just a nutrient to have in your body. It's stored, and your body does store it. Okay. Now, when you take alpha GPC, which is another choline, it causes the stored choline in your body to be released immediately. So you feel that uh, stimulation a little bit, but also better concentration acutely. So what I do is I take the dietary choline both lipophilic and hydrophilic because they act a bit differently. And I take, you need to take that as a vitamin anyway. Alpha GPC can also be stored, but I try to limit that because I want to use it to get the, the acute effects, to turn on the choline machine, basically. Mm. The other more important thing is what's called acetylcholinesterase inhibitors. Acetylcholinesterase is the enzyme that breaks down acetylcholine, removing the acetyl group. And so when you, when you block acetylcholinesterase, you have more choline in your brain. It makes your brain a sink for choline. Now, many supplements do this. For example, Ginkgo biloba, Huprazine A, Bacopa monieri. However, the best approach overall is, of course, Donapazil, which is a drug given to Alzheimer's disease patients. Now, Donapazil doesn't actually, uh, it's, it's thought not to slow the progression of neurodegenerative disease. So they don't actually mention that it can slow Alzheimer's disease, but it does. It does minorly. So it's a very healthy thing to have in your brain. The problem with Donapazil is this. If you take a high dose of donapazil, you'll have a baseline of cholinergic stimulation that's really high. When you try to take alpha GPC in the morning, you'll feel anxious. If you try to take nicotine, you'll also feel anxious. By the way, guys, nicotine is an agonist of cholinergic, nicotinic cholinergic receptors. The cholinergic receptors are divided into two groups. One are called muscarinic cholinergic receptors, which respond to muscarine, which is a mushroom, and a mushroom chemical. And the other side are the nicotinic cholinergic receptors. They all bind to nicotine. That's how nicotine is a nootropic through this system. But anyway, what I was going to say is this. If you take a high dose of donapazil, you'll have a very high amount of choline all day, which will give you, for example, much better REM sleep, by the way, interestingly. Yeah, very interesting. Wait, while you're on the donapazil or after the donapazil wears no, off? No, while you're on it. So it's, it's a actually having choline high in oh, the brain brother. is good for sleep? Oh, because brother. I thought that since choline seems stimulatory and gives me anxiety if I take too much, that, that maybe I would want my choline level lower during sleep. True, it stimulates you, but REM sleep is stimulated. REM sleep is the, is the dream sleep. Mm. And I actually have a protocol on my channel called probably Leo's Protocol for Lucid Dreaming. You can get lucid dreams, and the best way to do it is through these through the mm. But anyway, what I want to say is, if you have high cholinergic stimulation all day, you can't do this circadian shift where in the morning you focus a lot and you rest a bit more at night. You'll still, by the way, get better REM sleep. Melatonin and choline really improve REM sleep, donapazil in particular. But what I was going to suggest is this. If you wanted to use donapazil under doctor's supervision, you would start at like 5 milligrams a day, wait a week or so, and then slowly titrate up to 10 milligrams, maybe over the next week. And you could take that in the morning? In the morning. I like 10 milligrams myself as an effective dose for myself. If you do not use nicotine and if you do not use alpha GPC, you may want to use 15 or 20. But if you do, you'll probably want to limit it at 10. So, to, to remind you guys, you have... Uh, phosphatidylcholine and CDP choline in the diet, at least a gram of choline a day. The requirement in the U.S. from the government is they recommend about uh, 600 milligrams or so for men. I believe you function better at about a gram. So you take that with food later in the day. That's not active. It's just in your system. You take alpha GPC when you want to work, potentially with nicotine. And if you use nicotine, I like to use nicotine pouches or snooze, um, not as much the gum personally. 
And I like those much better than cigarettes because when you smoke a cigarette, you get the nicotine and then you have to go back indoors. And now you have low dopamine, low, low nicotine while you're working. Yeah. So it's not efficient. You want to have a slow release. So then you can use that in the, in the, if in the morning you wake up, you take your donapazil. And then when you want to work, you take your alpha GPC and nicotine. So that's the best way to upregulate the cholinergic system. I wanted to mention this clearly on a video because we talked about it before and people had some difficulty remembering the steps. This is, I believe, the most optimal. And there's one more thing you can do. You can use other drugs that improve cholinergic stimulation. Like, for example, paracetam, which should be brought out by Enhanced at some point. Paracetam uh, is a cholinergic drug, upregulates dopamine through choline, but it's very well studied unless, unlike the, um, the rest of the racetams, so I think it's quite safe. So you could also take that with your alpha GPC and donapazil, well, with your, with your alpha, uh, alpha GPC and nicotine in the morning. If I'm in a place where I don't have access to something like alpha GPC, I would eat more eggs. That, that's the eggs have choline in the natural eggs. source of yes. choline if, yes. if we don't have access to and the and there's others. And then personally, I use huperzine, but I will try donapazil. They're doing a similar thing, but donapazil is more powerful than huperzine. But, but huperzine is also very powerful. No, right? no, no. The most powerful one is actually ginkgo biloba in comparison studies. Oh, wow. Yeah, for sure. For ginkgo sure. biloba. Much I mean, I thought that that just increased the blood flow to no, the brain. Ginkgo I didn't biloba know is the strongest herbal acetylcholesterase inhibitor. And huperzine is a bit tricky because huperzine also acts like memantine or like ketamine. It blocks the NMDA receptors very lightly. Mm. In a good way, it's a safe. I, I tried to study it to discover it's safe or not. It is safe. I take huperzine myself, but I'm a bit anxious in the morning, and that's why I want it. Yeah. Whereas if you're not anxious, you don't really need to get into that NMD antagonist. One thing I like about huperzine is because it's very effective in a very, very small microgram dosage. So it's really easy to put into a formula. And whereas ginkgo biloba, you think the dosage is higher, people take it more frequently, but why not take both? Yeah, I used to take ginkgo and huperzine and bacopa in the morning before I switched over to donapazil. But donapazil is a game changer. Donapazil is a real real cognitive enhancement tool it's really powerful underused around the world in fact to be honest with you guys i think i'm the first person who ever talked about using it for cognitive enhancement mm. i don't i never heard about it before and it's really valuable almost as valuable as an only used in alzheimer's patients but they never no one actually ever used it for mental performance enhancement to exactly. be better than exactly and i'll tell you guys like it's seriously you've never tried it i think right right it's almost as as useful as amphetamines like it's wow. really useful okay that's yeah. a great tip all right i will give it a try you guys subscribe to the channel comment below what videos you want us to do or just leave a comment to support the channel be swole and swole friends of freedom pioneers of human evolution a day natty is a day wasted